Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm never 100% sure, like, if you're getting this much of my face and it's tight or if I'm, like, way far away. So, hopefully, I'm not cutting my, my head off. Um, happy Tuesday. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. As I was looking at my notes, I realized it has been a whole week. Um, I dropped the ball on Thursday and Friday of last week, so I apologize for that. Um, no, I didn't. I should probably delete this and start all over because I just now remembered I just didn't put one in this my notes. But anyway, um, I wanted to start off by saying I am so grateful for George's offerings on Sunday morning um, to read our Old Testament, our psalm reading, and give us some music um, to to really kick off our, our worship on Sunday morning and then to do one again on Monday. Um, I mean, he just really gets our week going in the right direction, and I greatly appreciate um, being a partner in ministry with him. Um, so we started our new sermon series on Sunday. I'm very excited about it. It's called Stories from Isolation, and we're using stories from Scripture where uh, people in the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, felt as if they were all alone in ministry or as if they were you know, being sent out all alone or, or um, you know, one of, one of those two things. So this past week, we started off with Elijah and his sense of um, that he was having to fight every battle all by himself and, that, and, and while being under personal physical threat the whole time. And, and to be fair, he was quite quite alone. There was no one standing beside him. Um, but as we talked on Sunday, God is always at work and God is always with us. So I was trying to think about what we would, what story I would bring today or, or what we would kind of focus on today. And, and I started thinking about another story. In fact, the very first story that we ever hear about Elijah in scripture. And, um, and I don't know why it came to mind, but it stuck. So, um, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, it's about, it has to do with scarcity and God's provision. And so maybe, um, who knows, uh, who knows how God planted that seed in my head, but it happened. So we find this story in first Kings, um, 17 and it's, it's truly an amazing story. And there's so many different lessons that we can take from it. Um, but in, in, at this time in scripture, the land was under an incredible, incredibly terrible drought and it was affecting everybody and so in this story where we're going to start in 177 Elijah meets this widow woman who has a young son and they are they find themselves in dire straits so here's here's that story um, 17 uh, 1st Kings 17 7 through 16 and it says, sometime, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked. Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it. And die. It was to be their last meal. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make me a small cake of bread. Make uh, first, yeah. but first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. And that would have taken some, some real guts, right, for her to do that. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up. 
excuse me, my notes just went away. Um, my, my jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. The word of God for the people of God. So we are right now living in our own type of drought um, as, a, as a world. And uh, what we are going through right now has threatened um, our health and our ability to provide for us, for our families. We're watching businesses close all around us. Um, and, and, off, and, and we find ourselves right now feeling as if we are being forced to choose between working and killing a large number of people. So as we read, as we think about our context, just where we are in the world and what's going on in our lives, and, um, and then we listen to the story, I wonder, what do you hear as you read this story? What is God saying to you um, in this time? And to be honest, um, God is telling me a lot of things. As I was reading this story um, earlier today to think through what I was going to say, um, I heard God speaking a lot of things into my life right now. Um, you should have heard the news. Uh, you should check your emails. Uh, the new pastor has been appointed for Chapel Hill, which is very exciting. Um, and I, I'm, I think that she is going to be such a wonderful fit for our church. Um, that feels really good. Uh, to know, to know who it is that'll be coming. But right now, as, as I'm preparing to move to a new place where I don't know anybody, um, at a time when I may or may not be able to meet people, um, I'm having to pack with no help, you know, like all kinds of things. There's, uh, God spoke a lot of things to my situation, not even apart from what we're going through as a world, um, uh, about where, who I can, how I can trust in God. And how I can step out in faith and do those things that God is asking me to do, even though I don't know what's coming. Um, that I can, I can use up the last bit of my resources in being faithful to God because I can trust that God's going to provide. Right? I mean, there's just so many things that God is, as I read this this morning, I just, I felt God's comfort. Um, I felt God kind of pushing me a little bit. Um, I felt God affirming what has happened and what will happen. So what do you hear as we read this story of God providing unlimited um, uh, flour and oil for this woman and her son uh, because of their faithfulness in uh, providing? I guess the, the, as we sit and we ponder that, that's a question for each of us. Like, what is God speaking into our daily life? But I think the final question I want to leave us with is um, how can we exhibit our faith in God when we have this very real threat of scarcity in our lives? Because the one thing we know is that God is God. Um, and, and what we heard on Sunday is that we are never alone. God is always with us. Um, so I invite you to hold that along with this story of Elijah and the widow woman. Let's pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this incredible day that will be so beautiful. We give you thanks, Lord, for our community of faith that continues to come together in worship and praise of you. We give thanks for the many ministries of our church that are continuing to go on, that, that continue to use the last bit of resources to, to make a loaf of bread, a little cake uh, for your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to continue to be faithful. Help us to continue to turn to your scripture for comfort. Help us, Lord, to reach out in love um, to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters in faith, and to everyone that you bring into, into our, our orbit. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us. Amen.
See y'all on Thursday.